Hi everyone, I'm Daniela and welcome back to Black Cat Kitchen. Today we're making one of the four classic Roman pastas, spaghetti carbonara. I'm going to show you the most authentic way to make this, but I'll give you a few tips and tricks along the way so that you can make it with what you've got in your house. You'll find a list of ingredients and measurements in the description below. For this to be the most authentic carbonara, you want to use guanciale. Guanciale is the jowl of the pork and it's really fatty and it has kind of a funky flavor because those mussels are being used so often. Now, if you haven't got guanciale or it's hard to find in your area, pancetta will work just as well. But, and I'm going out on a limb here because most people would say this is a no-go. If you've only got bacon, it's still gonna taste delicious. Remove the tough rind from the guanciale. You can leave the peppery outer coating if you'd like, but I prefer to control the pepper levels myself, so I like to take it off. Slice your guanciale into one centimeter pieces, and then further cut them down into one centimeter strips. Spread your guanciale out in a large cold pan, then set the heat to medium low. We're going to render out all of that fat nice and slowly so that the guanciale becomes beautiful and crisp. While the guanciale is cooking, set a large pot of water on to boil. For the sauce, you're going to use one egg per person, plus one additional egg yolk for a little bit of extra creaminess. The extra egg yolk is optional, but I would highly recommend it. For our cheese, we're using Pecorino Romano, 150 grams for two people. When making carbonara, this is the most traditional option, but you can use Parmigiano Reggiano in a pinch. Just please don't use the store-bought shaker wood flake stuff. That's just not going to taste good. And carbonara would not be carbonara without freshly cracked black pepper. And when you think you added enough, add some more. Whisk that all together with a fork so that the egg whites have completely broken down and everything is mixed together. If you can't see the pepper flaked throughout your eggs, you haven't put enough. So add a few more cracks. Now we'll set that aside until the guanciale and the pasta are cooked. Make sure to give your guanciale a little toss now and again so that all of the sides are evenly browning. Once the guanciale is mostly cooked, you're going to want to season your pasta water very well. Come il mare, like the sea. Here's a trick to get your pasta even in the pan. I like to take a big bunch in my hands and then sort of twist it like this. Then while it's twisted, drop it into the pot and you'll see it just sort of spreads itself out so that you don't have to worry about pushing down all of those strands of pasta. Cook your pasta one minute less than the package directions for al dente. You can use whatever shape pasta you like. Today I'm using spaghetti and I'm using a more sort of old fashioned type spaghetti. It's, it's made with older um, historical wheats. So it has a little bit more of a grit to the outside which allows the sauce to really stick to it. This just adds a little bit of something to the pasta. But if you can't find it or you've just got regular spaghetti or other pasta in your house, that's gonna work just as well. Our guanciale has rendered out all of its fat. Scoop it up and pop it into a little bowl on the side because I love to just sprinkle it on top of the pasta. Once your guanciale has been removed from the pan, turn the heat to low. When you see the little white ring in the center of your pasta become a pinprick, that's when it's ready. Now we'll transfer it over to our pan with our guanciale fat. Keep your pan moving so that the pasta doesn't burn to the bottom. Depending on how much water came over with your pasta, you may need to add a ladle or two if your pan is looking dry. Keep your pasta moving in the pan and turn off the heat completely. When it's off the heat while continuously stirring, add in your egg and cheese mix. It's really important to do this off the heat so that you don't scramble your eggs. And stir, stir, stir. You want the cheese to melt and the egg to become custard-like. And if your pasta looks a little bit dry, you can add in a touch more of the pasta water. If you find your sauce is too thin, add in a bit more cheese. Now if you want to be extra chefy, grab some tongs and swirl your pasta in your ladle. Then transfer it over to your bowl. Ladle over some extra sauce, sprinkle with your crispy crunchy guanciale, give it a few extra cracks of black pepper, and top with pecorino romano cheese. Buon appetito! for another easy store covered pasta, check out my pasta puttanesca. And if you love pasta carbonara, make sure to please give me a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because we've got more great recipes coming up soon. See you in the next video.